undefeated Y'all that I run things, y'all better believe me. Spin the earth on my finger like round ball on my globe trotters. What up, everybody in the YTBC? So let me just um, talk to y'all real quick. So it's been a little over a week since I dropped the video, and to be honest, it just just been I haven't been feeling it you know I don't want to do a million videos about Thurman versus Porter I've said everything that I have to say about the fight and really it hasn't been anything that anything else has really got me excited the sport as a whole has just been kind of a letdown it's just been like a cold war you know, a whole lot of talks about these fights being, you know, possibly being made. And then a whole lot of talks of these fights being held up, you know, either by one end or what have you. Two of the fights that I was looking forward to was Brooke versus Vargas. To my understanding, Vargas had had everything signed. We were just waiting on Brooke. Now, I am a Kel Brook fan, but I'm really getting tired of Kel Brook. You know, I, I don't even like Jesse Vargas, but much respect to him for signing the contract because Kel Brook was on some diva stuff. As much as I hate to say it, man, I, I mean... For a while, I've been thinking all these other channels have been just hating on Kell Brook. Then it switched from them hating on him to, okay, I can see why they want to call him a bum killer. They, you know, they say all he wants to fight are bums. You know, I was still on the fence. I wasn't calling him a bum killer myself. But I was just like, well, you know, these guys kind of have a point. Really can't blame them for having the point of view that they have. And when he announced, you know, that he wanted to move up to 154 pounds um, in 2017, I said all that criticism was valid. I also said that, you know, you should try to give him the benefit of the doubt. But he never signed the contract. Then you have this whole GGG versus Chris Eubank Jr. situation, which was another fight that I really wanted to see. My understanding is GGG was ready and Chris Eubank didn't want to sign the contract. After talking all that stuff about Triple G, you're not, you know, you're not ready for what I got and all, all this stuff and he didn't sign the contract. So then what do these two do? They create a fight with each other. Now, have both of these guys been in the same weight division, it'd be fine. But, fact of the matter is, you have a full-blown middleweight fighting against a welterweight. A big welterweight, but he's still a welterweight and has been fighting welterweight for some time. So... I don't like this fight. I don't like this fight not one bit. And there's a lot of hypocrites out there who co-sign the um, the uh, Canelo versus Khan fight, who are now talking trash about this fight. If you were somebody who supported. Canelo versus Khan, you have no business trashing this fight. I trash Canelo versus Khan. I could trash this fight. I'm being consistent. This is a garbage fight. I'm not going to defend it just because I'm a Triple G fan. And I'm not going to defend it just because I'm a Kell Brook fan. 
All right. Now, in my opinion, a majority of the blame does fall on Kell Brook's shoulders. He had a great fight ahead of him, which was unification that the other fighter has already signed the contract. And he wouldn't sign. And my understanding is because of money. I don't know what's up with Kel Brook. I don't know what, what's going through his head. I don't know what makes him think that this is logical. But it's not. It's not a logical fight for him to sign over Jesse Vargas. You have a chance to unify. And you don't want to do it. So you go two divisions up to fight a champion that is not unification. And then he, he's just going to get knocked out. And I, I don't want to hear none of this. Kell Brook is undefeated and, and all this stuff. It, there's a reason why we have weight classes. Think about it. Look at all the all the defenses people had with the Canelo Khan fight. You're hearing a lot of similar defenses with this fight. I don't want to hear it. Though they're not valid. Yeah, he's undefeated, but guess what? He's never fought at middleweight. It doesn't make any sense. Now as far as Triple G is concerned, I have mixed feelings on Triple G's part. All right. I think he was a bit too quick to make this fight. When the negotiations with Chris Eubank Jr. fell through, I feel Triple G was way too quick to make the Kell Brook fight. But on the other hand, you got all these people talking about, and I quote, the belts don't mean shit, end quote. And then they also like to say, and I quote, who has he fought? He needs to fight a name, end quote. And then they also like to quote him say, and I quote, I'll fight anybody from 154 to 168, end quote. Well, if Kell Brook has fought at 155 pounds, as I understand he has in the past, then he is fighting somebody from 154 to 168. And he's fighting a name. So for those people who say he hasn't fought nobody. He needs to fight somebody. Y'all can't criticize neither. Now those of us who have been saying. Triple G stay on your path. Become undisputed. We got all the right to criticize. Triple G. Should have not made this fight. And I'm very disappointed in Triple G. I ain't defending this fight. This fight is garbage. It should not happen. And I really hope. Sometime between now. And September 10th. Something happens where this fight does not happen. Don't want it to be injury. But I hope something happens. Where one of these two. Pulls out. Both these guys had a path ahead of them. And I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened with Chris Eubank Jr. Why he would talk all that trash and then not sign the contract. And then. Brooke. I, I, I mean, there is just no excuses for Brooke whatsoever at least with triple g i could say you know what he's been getting pressure to fight somebody i do think that this fight was made way prematurely like he's just too quick to make this fight but at the same time 
You got a lot of people that have been talking about that he needs to fight somebody and how he said he would fight anybody from 154 to 168. So, I mean, what do you expect him to do? He's doing what you said you wanted him to do. But a lot of these people will criticize that, that. See, I'm not defending this fight whatsoever. But you do have a lot of people who are haters. Doesn't matter what the man does. He could be doing exactly what they said they he should be doing. And they're still going to hate. As far as I know. Or as far as I'm concerned, I should say. The rest of 2016 is really filled with a lot of duds. Wilder for Beckin did not happen. Who knows if it's going to happen? Povetkin was cleared. But we don't know if that fight's going to happen now. Ward versus uh, Brand, garbage. Triple G versus Brooke, garbage. Uh, the Kovalev. Versus, I forget what the dude, ch chum, something, I don't know, I forgot what the guy's name is. That's a garbage fight. There's a lot of garbage ahead of us in 2016 after we had a really great matchup between Thurman and Porter. The only good thing happening as far as I know, well, there's two good fights that are supposed to happen before the end of the year. Fury versus Klitschko, which <clears throat> is a good fight, but I really, to be honest, don't care to see it again. I am going to watch it, but it's not a fight that I'm clamoring for. The only reason why it has to happen, really, as far as I'm concerned, is because it was there was a rematch clause in, in the contract for the first fight. So, But I think it'll be a good fight. I, think it, I honestly think it, it could possibly be better than the first fight. Klitschko just has to let his hands go. He can't be gun shot. All right. But there's that fight. Which is not even that exciting of a fight. But it's a good fight. And then. The Kovalev Ward fight. Oh. And then. Uh, how could I forget? Crawford versus Postal. So. So there is some. Some stuff to get excited about. I guess I was just looking at it a little bit pessimistically. But it's just so frustrating when you got these divisions that are so close to being unified or or that you could see them starting to be. I was hoping to see Thurman versus uh, Danny Garcia and the winner of that fight take on Brooke versus or the winner of Brooke Vargas. But now Brooke ain't even unifying. I don't care what anybody says. You can say all that stuff that sounds good, how he's undefeated and he beat Sean Porter and, um, you know, all this stuff. Bottom line is, he's losing his, his O. That's what's going to happen. I'll be very surprised if he... First off, I'll be very surprised if he doesn't get knocked out. But even if he doesn't, I don't see him beating Triple G. Triple, he's not going to make Triple G respect his power. He's not He's not going to bat, walk Triple G down. Nobody's been able to walk Triple G down yet. And I doubt a blown up welterweight is going to be able to do it. So what's going to happen? He's either going to run once Triple G makes him feel his power... Or he's going to try to go toe to toe and he's going to get knocked out. So I don't want to hear this garbage about that he's, a, you know, like, don't, don't be like the Floyd Extreme fans where they like to say this, so all this stuff that sounds good. Oh, well, he's undefeated and he's a champion and he's in his prime and it, all that stuff sounds good, but the. The fact is, Triple G is on a whole nother level from Kell Brook. 
and he's two weight classes above Kell Brook. Now, Kell Brook might put up a better fight than the average welterweight. I'll give you that. But he's not going up just any middleweight. He's going up against the most feared middleweight at this time. Not ever, because I know I know some people will hear that and say, oh, well, what? A... I'm not talking about all time. I'm talking about right now, he's the most feared middleweight. I'm not even going to say he's the most feared fighter right now because I don't really think he is. But he's definitely the most feared fighter in the middleweight division. And it's crazy how the only one who's willing to step up are either nobodies or people from two divisions lower. This is a fight that I don't want to see. I hope it doesn't happen. But as always, if you do, I respect your opinion. Feel free to leave a comment below. But all this garbage is really the reason why I'm going to make a video is because it just makes you like wonder, should I even watch this sport anymore? And I'm going to, I'm not going nowhere. I'm just saying like, it does, like, what you have to understand is this, I work full time. YouTube is a hobby. I don't get paid for it. I don't do AdSense. I do it strictly off of passion and not out of interest in the sport. But if, and the other thing is I, I wake up extra early before I start work to make these videos. But if there's not a topic that I feel worth waking up early for and making a video, the one on just I'll just sleep in. I'll just sleep in until until I gotta get up and start work. What am I gonna wake up early when I'm not making any money off of this? So the sport has to give something back to me for me to want to talk about it. So that's why I haven't made no videos. Like I said, I'm not. I'm not shutting my channel down or nothing like that. But it's very hard for me to try to make a video every day when I don't feel like I'm getting anything out of the sport. One good fight happened. I had a good run with some videos. But now, I just feel like I'm looking for stuff to talk about. Stuff that interests me. But in the coming, you know, you got, you got a couple good fights coming up. So... We'll see what happens. But anyways, y'all let me know what y'all think. To all my subscribers, anybody who watches my videos, or if you just so happen to stumble upon this video, hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Peace. How you think you don't stop the movement? You ain't that important, baby. I'm a deep fool.